So Michael, we are at the beginning of 2022, and we know that COVID changed the whole recruitment process in terms of everything is now on Zoom, it's a lot of networking, personal brand, content creation. In your expertise, do you have any specific tips in terms of job search strategy for 2022? Yes, uh, I do. First of all, I'm gonna kind of step back for a second and say, getting a job, finding a job is a full-time job. Now, when, as I say, it's yeah, a full-time job. Yeah, absolutely. And we're, we're in what's called the great resignation now. Yeah. People are leaving. This is indeed the new normal. And uh, we're, we're, we're looking at things differently. We need to do things differently. Mm -hmm. And what I would say is that effort, the amount of energy you put into it, meaning the number of people you reach out to, and I'm going to talk a little more about that in a second, and the blueprint that you have to reach out to them, meaning you're saying and doing all the right things, the apex of that is greater success, which means if you say and do, you prepare properly, mm -hmm. and you make more calls or have more conversations, the apex of that is more conversations with the best talk track is going to get, and talk track means questions too, is mm -hmm. going to get you the highest probability of success. The first thing you want to do is say, especially if you have a job or uh, are looking for something different than what you uh, maybe had before, is say, okay, what are my, my strengths? What are my passions? What am I uniquely qualified to do? Okay, so once you identify those things, you're going to look for transferable skills. Yes. Okay, and, and once you identify what your strengths are, your passions are, your qualifications are, then you want to say, what kind of company, what we're identifying right here is what you want to do. What's your passion? So you don't work any time. You know, if you're, if you love what you do, you're not working a day in your life. So yeah. what do you love to do? And once you identify that, what are you qualified to do? Then say, what are the type of positions and companies yes. that can provide that type of opportunity for me? Mm -hmm. You want to know what pond you need to fish in. Where do they exist? Mm -hmm. And then you create your target list. Yes. Now, here's the thing. Everyone talks about, so you have to first know what you want. What's your yeah. target? Know your strengths. Know your strengths and know what company and what your passions are, where you want to go. Yes. But the next thing is, once you do that, and you've identified your target list, is it has to be a big number. Because the more you call, the more you contact, the yeah. higher the likelihood of more interviews, more interviews and better interviews, more opportunities, more offers. But here's what's, what's really critical. Most, and, and I was even under the wrong impression when I first started uh, doing career coaching. I thought that uh, you go to a job posting, you submit your resumes, lots of resumes, lots of job postings, bam, it's a numbers game, and that's how you succeed. Actually, the majority of jobs are earned by, by networking, not by job postings. So I encourage you, if you think you're networking enough, you're not. Mm -hmm. You need to call your doctor, your lawyer, you have to call your veterinarian. You have to ask all your friends, everyone in your social media. Let them know what you're looking for and ask them if they know anyone that might be looking. Yep. The more you network, because that's going to get you an in. It's going to get you closer because a referral is always better than going in cold. Yes. So you definitely want to do that. You want to network 10 times more than you're networking now. Mm -hmm. Reach out to everyone once you're clear on what you want, why you want it, what type of company, what type of position then reach out to everyone you know, people you never even thought of before and say, hey, listen, I'm looking, if you know of anyone and you won't be, you'll, you will be amazed how many people say, yeah, I do know someone looking, but that's a numbers game. Yeah. You have to be, you have to use your, really dive into your network. Yeah, it's the hidden market that everyone talks about. I got my first job through referral. I knew someone that knew someone and they just passed my resume saying, just give her a, you know, a chance. And then the rest was on me. And then, yes, the job was posted, but it was hidden market. It was through networking. And sometimes I hear from clients that or from people that I interview that they follow the company and they've been in interactive with them. And the recruiter, whenever they had a position, they said, oh, this guy was following us. There was a lion and let's call him. And they found the job from there. Yeah, it's, you're, you move so much closer with a referral then you do, like I said, and like we talked about, Meher, yeah. with a cold 
application yeah. and then yeah. you'll have the applicant tracking systems. There's a lot of things that are against you yes. when you're applying cold yeah. to a job, uh, a job posting. So you definitely want to, you know, 70%, I think the number is, is how many jobs are attained by uh, really tapping into your network and your network is tons larger than you think it is. Yeah. You need to talk to everybody, let them know what you're looking for. And that's, and that's phase, phase two. First is what do you want? Why do you want it? Passion strengths. Yeah. They identify all those companies. Then once you're clear on that, then you want to say to all your friends and relatives and, and, and uh, people that you do business with, mm -hmm. Hey, can you help me? And uh, this is what I'm looking for. And yeah. then you have to ace the interview. Yes. Yeah. And I want to, sh may I share a few things about what I learned from these interviews? Yeah. Sure. Okay. So here's the, the things so they say, well, tell me, tell me about yourself. Yeah. There's over 35 common questions that are asked. Yeah. Behavioral you questions. Be prepared. Yes, exactly. You need to be prepared, not with a good answer. If you want to offer a good answer, then you'll have a good chance of getting the job. If you want to offer a great answer, you have a great chance of getting the job. What do you want? So what you want to do is know what these questions are, be prepared with all of them. Yeah. So if someone, if an interviewer asks you, tell me about yourself, do not start talking about, well, in kindergarten, my favorite toy was this. <laughs> the key, now I want you to remember these words. The key yeah. is relevancy. Yes. You want anything you say and during the whole interview process, mm -hmm. you want it to be relevant to the job or developing a relationship built on trust and rapport with the interviewer. So if it's building trust, uh, that's what you do. If it's building a rapport, that's what you do. If it's quantifying, which you need to do also, quantifying data, yeah. you don't want to tell in an interview, you don't want to say, hey, listen, I'm, I'm really committed, I'm focused, I'm hardworking. Everyone says that. Yeah, it's, show results, show numbers. It's, it's fluff. If you say, I was 100, if you're applying for a sales job, I was 100% of quota every year, or I was 130% of quota, or you worked, let's say, in inventory in, in the warehouse, yeah. and you reduced uh, uh, shrinkage by 20%, and ship damage shipping goods were reduced by 30%. You saved the company $138,000. You don't have to tell your future employer, wh whoever's interviewing you, that you're good at doing inventory work and you're focused, you're committed. The results speak, speak for itself yeah. because it shows that you did all those things correctly. Yeah. So speak with quantifiable data, numbers, results. That's what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. And lastly, so you have quantify everything with numbers. Yes. The other thing is make sure everything you say is relatable to the specific job. What will it mean to them in the job? And the last thing is you want to make sure that everything you do that you speak with a certain level of passion and conviction mm -hmm. that is believable. You know, I, I'm an animated person, so that's just who I am, but you can't say, yeah, this is, uh, this is what I am. And, <laughs> and this, when you do that- Confidence, show confidence. Yeah, show confidence. And what will really make an impact is do your research. That's what every hiring manager said, every recruiter said you will stand a much better chance than 90% of the people that came before you because they did not go on their website. Yeah. They did not look up the individual who was interviewing them. Mm -hmm. They don't know that that company just launched a new product. You can bring that up in the interview. You see, here's what happens when you did your research. You not only are able to speak their language, but you show them, you demonstrate that you're the type of employee they want that does pre-call planning, that does research. If you did it for the job, you'll do it when you're working for them. If you didn't do it for the job, then you won't do it when you're working for them. It demonstrates who you are. It demonstrates your work ethic, yeah. your habits, your yeah. routines. So do the work ahead of time. Bring it up in the interview. Don't wait for that. You can bring it up and say, I found this very interesting. Your company just launched out. I want to congratulate you. I really, and then talk about your experience, how it lends itself to that new launch. Yeah. So those anyway, are, yeah, those, those are the are, things that I think are important. Yeah, those are great tips, Michael. Uh, and I agree with you 100%. Research is important. Preparation is very important. So for the audience, if you have any other tips for job seekers in 2022, please leave comments below. And tune in next time for another great question with Michael.